I'm Stephen Kleisaf. I'm Stephen Boyer. I live in South Carolina. He lives in Florida. I live in South Florida, Pompano Beach area. What we've been trying to do, I guess, ambassadors, if you will, the last few years, we've been doing a lot of Mario Brothers activity at this convention. And it's really to throw attention at this game. And it's just the guy who created this is the same guy who created Donkey Kong, the, all the original Mario games. And he's a genius. I mean, the, the randomness of this game. He's got like the first green pipes, the first time you see Luigi, uh, the first time you have the PAL. What else? First time they have superpowers where they actually jump up high. It's just like having um, like the first issue of Spider-Man where you have the first, you know, Doc Ock and this guy and this guy. All these special things in this one game. Because even to this day, you have Super Mario Brothers, you have the green pipes all over the place. And this is when you first see it. Oh, the crabs, the coins, the turtles. Coins. All the staples that everybody knows from a billion dollar franchise all started with this game. So the mechanics are pretty simple. <clears throat> so for me, it's like I sort of instinctively don't really pay attention to my action, looking at my man too much. It's, it's what's coming. That's the thing. With this game, you've got to be two steps ahead when you get to a certain part of the game. It's like you, you sort of have to know, oh, I think it's going to throw the, you know, assume what it may do, worst case right. scenario, and then be able to Especially prepare Especially like the it, ice so. coming up a top pipe. Yeah. Other people we know who try to play Mario Brothers, like especially our Donkey Kong friends who are just Donkey Kong players, they always complain that the mechanics of the joystick and the button are foreign to them, but I think well, it's amazingly it easy. perfectly. Because with Donkey Kong, game. you have to go up. With Mario Brothers, you're going left to right and jump button. That's it. So I, I never really have a problem with the joysticks. I mean, we, yesterday we had one issue where the guy who owned the game came in and he sort of uh, fidgeted underneath the control panel a little bit. But overall, I don't find myself having – I love it, personally. I love the way I, I have no the problem with the joystick or yeah. the mechanics of the game. Because, like, on, when I played Miss Pac-Man, sometimes you get a joystick that's coiled up, it seems, sort of tight, and it, you sort of have to address the pressure of your – hand on it and stuff, so I know what you're talking about, definitely. But Mario Brothers, yeah, I don't, don't really experience that too much. It's pretty much, I mean, for us, maybe it just calls out to us. Because <laughs> there's other games where I, I fully know what you're talking about. Especially yesterday, there was a, my friend Adam Daniel, he brought like 10 games from South Florida. He has a Donkey Kong that's up against the wall where there's that electronic scoreboard by the wall. And he had to swap out he had to put an eight-way joystick in, which you never want to play an eight-way on a Donkey Kong. It's like impossible to climb up the ladders without fidgeting. And uh, because he gave the, uh, his regular one to the other machine that Bill was playing on. So, uh, so yeah, especially like eight ways can be terrible based on what the game is. But. I think the reason this game didn't really take off as, as good as like say Donkey Kong is just like a two-year window. They say between 81 and 83 was like night and day for some reason. It's just by happenstance we discovered each other through him verifying another game I played when he was a Twin Galaxies referee. And then we started getting talking about Mario Brothers and all of a sudden we, we realized our love for the game and eventually joined forces. To, uh, yeah, as soon as he brought up, uh, well, he sent me like a verification for, what was it, Miss Pac-Man? Turbo Miss Pac-Man. Pac Pac yeah. And I said, hey, man, have you ever played Mario Brothers? Um, and then next thing I know, I, I'm getting I a score. I'm getting a score, you know, for like 300 something thousand from Steven. And then, you know, we started talking about playing doubles, and we had to figure out how to be able to do that because he's in another state. And that's when I discovered Main Hub. And it's like, you can play this game right here, the exact same game, but, you know, he's in Florida, I'm in South Carolina. We connect through the internet, and we can actually practice and perfect our patterns. Um, even though it, it looks like patterns, the patterns are only like for the first probably two critters, and then after that, you're just running on skill, just to stay alive and try to finish up the board. And if you watch, I mean, if you watch this when we're playing it on hardest, I'm going to be jumping up there, and I'm going to be hitting the green fireballs and just protecting him. This game's a little bit different because it's on medium, but on hardest, I have to jump up there right away. I have to hit the greenies to keep, so that he could run his pattern. If not, he wouldn't get the first two critters. In, in NFL terms, I'm like the diva wide receiver. And he's like, in the, he's the lineman in the trenches. Like, if you, you look know. at my guy down here, it looks like I'm not really doing anything, but I'm watching to help him out. If, if, if something gets by him, I'm going to jump up there and try to knock it over. And actually, when we did this, what year was this? This was in Pittsburgh. Was it? Oh, yeah. It was about right. four years here, ago this was or in something? Pittsburgh. I, I think we're better now. I'm more offensive, he's more defensive, I think, in our styles of play. Like, I'm a little more of a risk taker, definitely. He's a little more of like a safety net and kind of, you know, safe approach. 
But it's a good yin and yang. Yeah, it's, it's a good team game. I can use a sports analogy, like golf. You're by yourself. You're responsible for yourself. You're individual, you know, relying on yourself. Team sports, that's the equivalent of, you know, we're, we have to put our the best we can, our differences aside that we may have, and we're friends anyway, but I mean, and really think about the other one as much as yourself because, especially in this game, if one person gets all their men killed off and the other one still has men left, it doesn't matter. The game's over. Game's over. So we, ha we have to do our best to keep each other alive. You know? I, I would say this. When you play single player, I believe it's easier than playing uh, two player. Um, even if we're, like right here, this is 1.5 million with medium. But for the single player world record for medium is like, what, 5.4 million? 4. It's so night and day. Million. I mean, it's, it's definitely more difficult with two player for some reason. It shrinks the board. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you know, I, mean I can't just go from the top and drop down all the time. I got to stay away from my partner. So therefore, whatever's in my area, I just have to avoid it. There is some odd solitary to the team because we can never be on the same level. I mean, basic strategy is you're never on the same level together because it's just more of a volume of, of one of us getting yeah. killed. It, it happens, but right away we try to, like, somebody tries to drop down and get away. Somebody tries to get out of the way of the other. But, yeah, it is a, it is a definitely different dynamic, no doubt about it, singles as opposed to – I mean, there's I get satisfaction from both, but I think maybe in a way because so many people don't – it doesn't seem to be as popular team games or doubles games as solitary single games are. I mean, I guess on average – so it is a unique kind of niche that uh, I'm happy to be a part of, of course. So well, right now, even talking, yeah. we can play off each other. We just know what out. to do now. I, yeah. you know, I just know where to be and where to go and how not to kill him. And you know, it just, It's just come with years of practice. I am usually operate up top. He's usually <laughs> underneath the pal. We, we said this earlier. I don't know if you're in here. One of the basic, most important things of this game is – do we were we just yelling at him? He just died. <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he freaks out sometimes. That was his last man, or next to his last man. Oh, that's right. And that's we right. were trying to get the record. And we did get it, but obviously. Oh, that's right. I you operated on my last man off, for a long time. You bounced off my head and died. Oh, okay. He killed me. But, uh, <laughs> so I get blamed for it. I just have to take it. But, yeah, typically um, I operate up top. He operates underneath as, like, cleanup for what I don't get initially. And, um. It's very important, the first two critters, we call them, are animals that you get on this board, no matter what. If you don't get the first two while they're still up top, the game gets really difficult quickly. Yeah. So. And if you can't pal, you're in trouble, big time. Early on, we try to get as many points as possible. We even hit the red fireballs on the early stages. But once you get to, in your phase, 30s and on, then it's just survival. You're just trying to finish the phase as quick as possible, because the longer you take, to finish the phase, the harder it's going to get to not be killed. Yeah, you're going to have more ice yep. forming. You're going to have like two multiple fireballs. Multiple green fireballs. So it's, it's more than just the critters. However, we do have a process of how we approach each phase. And that I'm usually on the top level. We're never on the same level together. That's one of the kind of well, I mean, it happens. strategies. It, it happens, but whenever it happens, you know, you've got to try to separate. You have to adjust, yeah. Because the reason is you're going to have like one green fireball coming after me and one coming after him. If you're on the same level, they're going to kind of block us in. I'm trying to make life as easy as possible for him up top by getting his, like, by ending the phase as quick as possible. And he's like the, the safety net. When stuff gets by me, you know, he's, he's taking out stuff so I don't get killed as a result. Sometimes we try to get extra points. When we know it's safety, to your question earlier, Usually it's just to survive. Now this is the bonus phase where obviously the levels disappear. You just have to know the pattern. That is a pattern actually. Where to jump, like how many steps before you jump to get all the coins before the timer runs out. So yeah, the bonus phases, it is a pattern actually every time. If you look at the bottom screen, I don't know if you can see where it says KO. I don't, I've never really understood why that was a, a part of the game because I wish it would say like what phase you're on. Because the game has like, you have a bonus, then you have like one, two, three phases, and then it repeats them, one, two, three phases, and then another bonus. And I just wish I would know, because there's a lot of times, I don't know if I'm on the first set of three or the second set of three, and that controls like how I do my pals. Especially when you're doing like a single player game, and you just lose focus of where am I on screen, or phase five, 
or I'm on phase two. That is the one big mystery that even we do not know of this game is the mystery of the KO down below there. It's hard to see on the screen there, but we really don't know what that's about. Uh, we thought originally maybe it was counting the, initial, the, the phases up to a certain point, but it's, it's really not. It's just very random. And yes, you, that is a good point that he made, is sometimes you lose track of, oh, do we have one more board before the bonus? Or, like, it, it is, sometimes it gets difficult to remember what phase you're on. 30, phase 35, I would say, is the single hardest phase, or the beginning. Like, imagine phase 35 the rest of the game. That's, <laughs> after that bonus, it's phase failure. Yeah. And, and it seems oh, like- Oh, we do too. It seems phase like 35 is Whenever you're going in those sets of three, like I said, one is the same as four, you know, two is the same as five, and so on. It just seems like number three and number six is like, we joke about it all the time, because it's so hard, next thing you know, there's the bonus, I say, yeah, phase six. Phase six is always so difficult. I see a lot of people, play, well, the people, some people I know that do play Mario Brothers or streaming on Twitch on occasion, and I do notice, and I don't necessarily agree with this technique, this is when you're playing with a pal. They try to conserve their pals as much as possible, but. In the early going, it's when in doubt, pow. That's why I say just, you have it to use. Concentrate on the stage you're on that you're having trouble with and just don't worry about the next phase trying to save a pow. It's try to survive what you're doing now to live for another day, you know. So I see some people like they're afraid to use the pow because they think, oh, I want it for the, you know, but it always regenerates every six phases. So you're always gonna get a new one. And uh, if you're in trouble, just use it. You know, it tilts the board. You get extra points that way if there happen to be coins, you know, you get all that. So so I, I always tell people, when in doubt, pow it out. <laughs> he, when he was a referee, he created some variations that were accepted as regular, as verified platforms. And we've been doing some of those this weekend, like ultimate no pow hardest. And you know, all the no pow stuff is basically, you, yeah. you came up yeah, with I, I came up with all the no pow because I remember seeing Donkey Kong no hammer. And I was like, you know, what can I do for Mario Brothers? And I just sure. created no pal. But then I was like, I mean, this right here is like 1.5 million. And I was like, you know what? I think we're at the level where we could just put it on the hardest difficulty. And let's just go as hard as we can. Because so no one's ever even played that difficulty that we know of. And, and if you, you know, if you watch a game with the hardest difficulty, I mean, it's, it's just stupidly hard. It's hard to stay alive. It's hard not to die. You've got to clear, you got to clear the board as fast as possible. Challenge. And if not, it's almost like the game knows where it's got to put the fireballs, and it's going to cheat too. The game cheats us all the time. We lose lives all the time because we hit right up under something and it just doesn't. I know that's a funny word, but maybe it's more like a glitch. Like sometimes, like for instance, there's slip ice that'll come, and if you hit underneath it, you'll break it. But every once in a while, you hit underneath it, it doesn't break. Yeah, that, that's reason. a glitch. It's like a random glitches that that even make it harder as you go along because you don't know when that's going to happen when you're expecting to be able to, to do what you usually do to clear the board, and then all of a sudden it throws you a curveball and it doesn't do what, it's, what it usually does. So there's that kind of, that kind of element too. And of course with this one we're using the PAL as a safety net to tilt the board when we're in trouble. The no PAL variations, you don't have that luxury, so you're really kind of with a tightrope walking without a, a net underneath, so and to then, speak. And then afterwards, you know, I created something called Ultimate No Pal, which means you, at the very beginning of the game, you just knock the pal out three times. And every bonus stage, you hit the pal three times, you just knock it out. We're so playing you, on the hardest difficulty, Ultimate No Pal. That's as hard as you can so possibly So you can't do. use it and you can't even stand on it, you know? And that's what makes it ultimate as opposed to there, There's no pal. safety net. I mean, it's just stupidly hard. We got green fireballs. There's a red fireball that lurks, almost like a heat-sinking missile. You know. So the green ones are the ones starting on the side, and then after I don't know 30 seconds or so, the red one starts at the top. But it's almost like it knows what you're going to do eventually, and it, and it tries to disrupt your progress on finishing the phase. And you turtles have to know. is probably the easiest one. You have turtles, and then what? Uh, turtles, moths, side steppers, or crabs. And then you have the uh, fighter flies or the, the moth. The moth you actually have to hit as it drops on the platform. If it's in the air and you hit, you won't kill it. And then obviously after you hit all these critters from underneath, then you have to go to the platform they're on and kick them off. And if you don't do that in a certain amount of time, the critter will, will come back to life and then you can, if you don't knock them off in time, you can die that way too. And sometimes, you do have to sack a man. It, like, 
if you're like if he if I only have like one man left and he has three, then you know for the sake of the continuing the game. And something else, if you die in this game, it's not like Donkey Kong. You don't just start over. You got to drop That's down in this point. mess. I mean, eventually somebody's going to die on here, and you're going to see it. <clears throat> But you've got to drop down in everything. Every, all the ice, all the critters, everything. You just got to drop down and just keep going. And a lot of times, I'll die a second time. That's actually a very good point to reiterate. Most of your games, like if you play Donkey Kong, you get killed. Well, you get to start over from the beginning. In this game, you get killed, you reappear on a platform, and the board is continuing how you left it. And you have to jump down into it. So that's what creates even more of a difficulty with this game, in my opinion, than even games like Donkey Kong, which can be difficult. But with Donkey Kong, at least you get a fresh start from the beginning of whatever level you died on. Here, you got to go right back into what you just got out on. So. <clears throat> it's usually around phase 98, which, by the way, is actually the last phase that is counted in the game, is phase 98. After that, the game continues, but it no longer counts phases. Right around when it gets to phase 98, you're, right, you're really close to a million it was like an hour, hour and a half. About, about a, no, not an hour and a half. Probably about, about an hour, hour and a half per About an hour, hour and ten minutes. Yeah. And by the way, the Japan goes up to phase 99. You have that one, ex, you have like an extra turtle. Like phase two is like a, a bonus one. Yeah, on the Japan ROM, there's, there's phase 99. That's true. And you know, there's some games too, especially the marathon games, where you can build up men to where you get to a point, maybe you can take a break here and there. Maybe you can free your mind up for a sec. This is just relentless. You get four men a piece. That's it. And it's just nonstop, like complete attention to detail and focus. You know, if you take just a second off, it's like you put you could put yourself in a compromising situation. Whereas some of the other records, which I completely respect, marathon records, of course, but at least you can build up men in a lot of those games. And, you get and, 200 uh, men. We actually want to attempt to marathon the Japan ROM of Mario Brothers. I actually attempt to do a, to make this game a marathon on the Japan ROM. You, uh, well, the 70,000, that could just be a different revision, but Japan ROM, I think you, right, yeah. I think every 20 or 30,000, you get a man, an extra man all the way up until just before a million. Then it cuts off. Yeah, if no you more, make it no that far, man. at that point, however many men you've accumulated, you continue on. Which, try to which go should as far be as like go. around 30 or so extra men. So. If you don't lose any prior to the, the cutoff. So we say marathon, but I don't really know how far we can play it. I don't know. I mean, we might we want to try to go 10 to 12 might hours. Might get 10 million, or we might get 5 million. I'm not sure. Yeah. I mean, as far as we know, it doesn't have a kill screen, and we've probably went through like 500 phases, so I, I don't think it really has one. Which is a rare quality of the early games, because usually there's always an end to a lot of the games. Although this came out in '83, so that's a little bit after the yeah. first wave. 